I. These hands used to hold me as a little girl, would comfort me. But now they've become aggressive. This mouth used to sing me lullabies. Now it's unrecognizable. If your loved one with Alzheimer's dementia has become agitated, it's not their fault. They could have agitation in Alzheimer's dementia, which can cause behavior beyond their control. Help your loved one. Learn more at agitationandalls.com. Tomorrow on ET, The Real Housewives meets The Simple Life. How Sonia Morgan and Luann Deliceps' new show pushed them to the brink. I don't think any other housewife could get through that. Make sure you check that out. We have one more thing to show you before we leave. Good night, everybody. Take care. Jenna Ortega is celebrating today. She's a first-time Emmy nominee. Happening now. We're live from Eagle Pass, where the first ever marine barrier is being installed. Another effort by the state to secure the U.S.-Mexico border. Up next, you'll hear from the agency overseeing this operation. Record challenging heat out there today. We'll check in to see if we broke the record, but it's not just the heat, also the humidity causing oppressive heat index values. I'll see you in a bit. You really don't need to spend a lot of money on a fancy grill. You heard it folks, coming up, how to become a grill master without breaking the bank. The news at five starts right now. For the very first time, KSAT getting a look at Governor Greg Abbott's new floating border wall. As we speak, a private company now installing buoys along the Rio Grande, and the purpose is to keep migrants from crossing. Our Jonathan Cotto live now from Eagle Pass, where those barriers are being set up. You can actually see them right behind you, Jonathan. Do we know how long this will take? That's right, Steve. You know, in fact, what you're seeing behind me is the state's multi-billion dollar effort in securing the border. Now, I can tell you, since we've been here this morning, uh, this area has served as a, as a staging area for those buoys. The number of buoys has gone down as they're being trucked out to strategic points along the Rio Grande. But we do know these buoys arrived here in Eagle Pass last week, and the project is projected to take at least a couple of weeks to be completed. The Marine Barrier is one of the latest efforts by the state of Texas in securing the border. Previously installed shipping containers along the portions of the Rio Grande as well as razor wire that DPS officials say are layers of defense. Lieutenant Christopher Olivares with the Texas Department of Public Safety says the buoys should discourage migrants from crossing into the U.S., but says some attempts will be made to cross the river despite the barrier and the dangers that exist. We do know for a fact that whether it be a migrant or whether it be a smuggling organization in Mexico, they're going to try to find ways to defeat uh, this barrier. So we will have manpower that will be monitoring this barrier. And of course, if there's any damages or anybody does make it across, then they could possibly face some type of state criminal charges. Once installed, the marine barrier would cover about a thousand feet of the middle of the Rio Grande. They say the buoy system will be netted with anchors that drop down to the riverbed. Obviously, the, the buoys will be placed in strategic areas where we've seen the majority of flow of uh, people coming across the river where some of these areas are very deep, the water is very deep. So we want to prevent those crossings, we want to prevent the drownings. He says while the number of migrant crossings have dropped, human smuggling operations have increased. When we come across some of these smuggling situations um, along the border where drivers from all over, you know, from different parts of Texas, even out of state, are still continuing to get involved in human smuggling and smuggling, you know, migrants further into the interior as well as children. Now, Steve, Stephanie, it's important to mention that this is an operation that has solely been funded by the state. We know DPS is overseeing the installment, but the actual installment is being conducted by a private company. Now, we know this effort has garnered a lot of backlash by several migrant advocacy groups as well as environmentalists. So coming up at six, we're going to be speaking with a local leader who says the buoys, well, he says it's just a band-aid and not a real solution to the problem. Reporting live from Eagle Pass, Jonathan Cotto, Casey at 12 News. Jonathan, thank you for that. Another news, a 29-year-old woman found dead in a field behind a shopping center. It happened on the city's far east side. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says that someone driving an ATV found the woman's body just after one on the corner of Foster Road and Summerfest. Sheriff Javier Salazar says that investigators are still trying to piece together just how that woman died. The sheriff says that the woman was experiencing homelessness, so her death could be heat related, but she did have minor injuries to her face. That she's partially clothed um, and does does have some signs of, of trauma, 
but at this point it's just too early to tell if that trauma uh, contributed in any way to her death or if this is just a heat related death. So a bulk of the investigation is taking place along the intersection of Foster Road and Summerfest. So the sheriff is asking people in that area to be patient because right now that area is blocked off during the investigation. We are learning that HCA Healthcare had a data security incident. It's impacting all of their locations, including here in San Antonio. The company says a list of patients information like name, city, email, phone number were released by an unknown and unauthorized party on an online forum. That's according to the company's website. The leak did not include patient treatment information or sensitive information like social security numbers. More than 100 facilities across Texas impacted by this. The full list can be found at hcahealthcare.com. Now, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers want you to pay really close attention to this image you're about to see. It's a surveillance photo. It shows the person who shot and killed a store clerk on New Year's, New Year's Day four years ago. Now, police are still looking for that person. The victim in this case was 42-year-old Timothy Collins. He was working at the 7-Eleven on Callahan Road when he was robbed and killed. Now, investigators say that at the time, Collins had been trying to stop the robbery from happening when he was shot multiple times. He died from his injuries, and now Crime Stoppers is paying up to $15,000 for any information that leads to an arrest in this case. So if you know anything, call 210-224-STOP, and just a reminder, you can re remain anonymous. President Joe Biden and G7 leaders vowing unwavering support for Ukraine on the last day of the NATO summit in Lithuania, offering assurances that that country will be welcomed in the, into the alliance in the future. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. Taking to the world stage in Lithuania, President Joe Biden touting the strength of NATO's unity and declaring unwavering support for Ukraine. We will stand for liberty and freedom today, tomorrow, and for as long as it takes. The president's emphasizing to Ukrainian President Zelensky the new commitment from G7 countries to support Ukraine joining NATO in the future. I hope you uh, all got a sense today from all of my colleagues that uh, how... Uh, how much you have, how much support you have. It's real. The leading nation's joint declaration appearing to calm worries from Zelensky over whether Ukraine would be admitted into the alliance. The outcome of the NATO summit in Vilnius is very much needed and meaningful success for Ukraine. And I'm grateful to all leaders in NATO. Despite no clear timeline on Ukraine's membership, Zelensky said he was satisfied with the assurances from NATO leaders and thanked them for the promise of long-term military aid as his war with Russia continues. Zelensky also took a moment to defend Biden's decision to provide controversial cluster munitions to Ukrainian troops, calling other countries hypocritical for pushing back on Ukraine's access to the weapons when Russia used such weapon from the first days, not only full scale war from first days of occupation of Crimea. Today, the Kremlin firing back at the potential use of cluster munitions by Ukraine, saying this prompts Russia to take certain countermeasures. In his remarks, President Biden also focused on climate change and global infrastructure. Tomorrow in Helsinki, Biden will welcome NATO's newest member, Finland, in the final stop of his European trip. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. So back here at home, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center needs a favor from you. If you can donate blood, they need you to roll up your sleeves because they're getting 30% fewer donations this summer. The center says that 30% of the blood that they collect here in South Texas goes straight to cancer patients. It also goes to people who have received organ transplants. Also, it goes to newborns, moms, and other patients. Not all heroes wear capes. Some of them wear armbands, as you can see, as you can see the donors here in our beds. That inspired me because there's other people who were in my shoes, and I want them to be able to have the blood that they need and for their family members to have the blood they need because um, being able to save someone's life or improve their quality of life, that's very important. Yes, it is. And that young lady, you're going to hear more from her at six o'clock. Max Massey is going to introduce you to her. That woman has donated almost a gallon of her own blood, which has saved more than 20 people. Check out traffic and uh, I have a traffic trouble spot. I want to show you it's 410 and Starcrest. As you see right there, I believe we're looking eastbound on 410, a big backup. 
That's as 410 gets closer to I-35, so that could be what's contributing to the backup on a very <laughs> hot day, Adam. You know, I was thinking rolling down the uh, highway today, it's that time of year you really need to double check your tires, make sure they're in good condition and properly inflated, not just for mileage, but with the ground being so hot, sometimes that can be problematic. Anyway, that was just a side thought. 103 so far. The preliminary high temperature today, notice the bug on the corner says 104. There still could be an update here by 6 o'clock. We'll have the latest for you and let you know the actual high temperature for the day. But right now, we've got triple digit heat. Floresville, 106. Even Leon Springs, 102. Myco, 105. Lavernia, 106. It's not just the heat, but also the humidity. We'll talk about the oppressive heat indices, which will be below 100 by 11 p.m. tonight. We'll talk about that in just a bit. You know what, Adam, no matter how oppressive it is, diehard grill masters and bar backyard barbecuers, they're not stopping. Let's just say, and as an example, that your grill has uh, fl fr flame broiled its last burger. Well, don't sweat it because 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has the experts recommendations. And listen to this. They're not going to burn your budget. You can easily spend thousands on a new grill, but hang on. You really don't need to spend a lot of money on a fancy grill. It's not going to make your food taste any better. For that, you really just want to practice, practice, practice. Consumer Reports tested grills and good news. They say you can get a good one for less than $300. They found this even embers model heats up fast and is a good option if you tend to cook a lot of the same foods at the same time. If you want to cook up a variety of foods at the same time, you want to grill with temperature range. Temperature range is important because a grill that can cook at a broad range of temperatures can cook way more food and it can do it easier. So you can sear a steak on one side of the grill and slow cook a piece of chicken without burning the skin on the other. He says this Revo Ace from Walmart delivers. If you're a charcoal griller, this Weber Kettle Grill consistently gets very good scores for evenness. If you're ready to take your grilling beyond the grates, check this out. A flat top grill fills in the gaps left behind by a regular grill. So instead of having grates, it's got a smooth surface, a lot like a griddle, which makes it ideal for anything you'd order from a diner. Things like pancakes, bacon, eggs, grilled cheese are all great on a flat top. This Loco got top scores. It has special burners that cycle on and off to maintain the temperature. Paul Hope was able to cook for a crowd on this budget friendly flat top from Blackstone. It starts at about $260. He found this Ninja Wood Fire Electric is a great alternative to flame grilling, and it doubles as an air fryer. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I love all that. It all looks so good. Yes. Go. Coming up, a different perspective on Amazon Prime Day. You're going to see how an Amazon facility right here in San Antonio is keeping up with all of your orders. Plus, a bit of a mystery. Two firefighters in Alabama shot while at their station. Why police believe this was not a random shooting. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. It is a place where everyone is coming and going, the San Antonio airport. But now all employees here are being trained on how to spot human trafficking and what to do about it. Today at 6, hear the powerful story of one trafficking survivor. Plus, summer is a great time to get out and hike or camp, but this heat beating down on all of us can have some deadly consequences. We talk with a wilderness medicine expert about how to get out there and still stay safe. All that and more coming your way today on the News at 6. Myra, thank you. Police in Alabama investigating after two firefighters were shot inside of a fire station. Birmingham police believe that the shooting may have been targeted, but at the moment, the motive's unclear. The two firefighters were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Investigators are not releasing details about the shooter. So let's talk about this. Amazon Prime Day has officially, well, it's actually done. This is the last day and the deals are going to end at midnight. Our Sarah Costa is going to take us inside one of the three Amazon delivery stations in Von Orme to give us a behind the scenes look at what goes into getting those products to your door and also the local economic impact. Amazon Prime Day kicked off Tuesday and ends tonight at midnight, which means Amazon warehouses across the world are busy, including the several fulfillment, supplement, and delivery centers here in South Texas. The delivery center in Von Orme is one of the three delivery centers in the San Antonio area. 
Sheldon Houston is its operation manager and says they are ready for it. So we prepare for this all year long. This is our Super Bowl and we, we, we're ready for it. And when you add to cart and click purchase, your packages make a couple of stops before they arrive at your door, even if they are getting delivered on the same day. When they hit that, hey, I'm going to buy this button, uh, it goes to our fulfillment center and our fulfillment centers are, are large buildings and that's where all the orders go to. Uh, from the fulfillment center, they are dispersed out to the sort centers. The sort centers, again, sort them out based on their name, uh, to the smaller sites, which are us, the delivery centers. And then from us, we get them on the road to our customers. Last year was the biggest day for Amazon Prime Day, where over 300 million products were purchased. Here locally, it's also a really big next couple of days, because here at the Von Orme Delivery Station, they average about 50,000 packages a day are processed. Alone at this station, they're going to be seeing about 80,000 packages processed for the next couple of days. The economic impact isn't just felt internationally from Prime Day, but locally, with Amazon hiring more drivers on the road. Us is a big deal because we increase our hiring. We again, for us to ensure that we get those packages out and meet our customer promise, we have to hire more people. So we bring more people for both internally again and our drivers. We're going to have at least 500 cars, uh, trailers on the road today. And more hands on deck are needed at the warehouses as well. We're usually around 80, to, uh, 80 people a day. Uh, today we're at 145. You still have time to make those purchases until midnight. One of the best buys you can get on Amazon tech devices, with some at almost 70% off. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. A busy place. Well, the city of San Antonio being named one of the top 15 favorite travel cities in the U.S. Travel and Leisure is ranked the 210 at number 10 on the best cities list. A list based on the experiences of 165,000 travelers who shared their opinions on hotels, cities, airlines, and more. Cities also rated on landmarks, food, and friendliness. Yeah. We're only food, yeah, food and friendliness, that's a big one. Um, right here, a live picture outside and, oh, okay, 105 degrees, Adam. All right, uh. just help us through this. Air conditioning, that's yeah. the best way. Uh, Splute on some ice outside. You know, splooting when animals lay. Yes. I think I need to clarify you do, that. You do it too. <laughs> I've splooted before trying it. Mm -hmm. It didn't necessarily cool me off, but uh, it was interesting. That's something for a different day. I'm a little distracted. Okay, let's get to our temperature forecast here going forward. 103, the high temperature for several more days. Basically, we're going to bounce between 102 and 104 for the foreseeable future. But here's the key. It's going to feel like it's 110 when you factor in that humidity, which is still unusually high for this time of day this time of year. Here's the big picture. There is some active weather, but it's in the Midwest. That's where it is. We're talking Iowa moving into Chicago and parts of Illinois and Wisconsin, Illinois and Wisconsin. Here we still have the upper level high. The heat heights not centered directly overhead, but in July it doesn't have to be to give us this heat and triple digit temperatures. So that's what we're seeing and we're going to continue to see it. Now the upper level heat high, it's actually sliding westward. And over the weekend, it's going to be parked over California and Nevada, really heating them up. Even in the mountains of California, they could have some triple digit heat at the higher elevation, which isn't always as common in the higher elevations of California. Then the high slides eastward again, and it starts to flatten out and elongate over Texas. Bottom line, it's still close enough to continue to influence our weather and keep us rain free. Speaking of rainfall potential, other parts of the nation Yes, they're going to have some rain in the days ahead. It's just not around here. You look at the main potential, especially with the darker greens, and that's up into the plains and even farther to the east of us in the southeastern states, but around Texas, Panhandle and North Texas, the only places that could get clipped by some of that shower and thunderstorm activity. 102 right now. Our high so far today, 103. That may change between now and 6 o'clock. So tune back in at 6. I'll let you know what the official high was. But the record is 105. So a record challenging day. We'll find out at 6 how close we got. Dew point of 67. That's the key. So it feels like it's 5 degrees warmer than the actual air temperature. Castroville, air temperature 107. Bandera, 104. Pleasanton, 105. Catula, 107. Carrizo Springs, 108, but here we go. Let's factor in the humidity and the heat index is around 110 and even in excess of that in some locations. So Gonzalez, for example, feels like 114. New Braunfels feels like 
113. We're still dealing with that oppressive heat index, and we're going to have that for the foreseeable future here. Unfortunately, it's just something we're going to have to continue to deal with. 79 in the morning tomorrow, a decent amount of clouds early in the day, and then by the noon hour, we're sunny and 93, but already feeling like it's over 100. High temperature, 103. 4 and 5 o'clock, but feeling like it's closer to 110 when you factor in the humidity. Uh, temperatures are going to be basically more of the same everywhere tomorrow. Kerrville about 102, Canyon Lake 103, Poteet 104, Divine 105, but feeling like it's 5 to 7 degrees warmer than those air temperatures. And notice that trend continues. No chance of rain, just a lot of sunshine other than the morning clouds. Record challenging on Saturday. We're forecasting a record high temperature by one degree at being 103 would be our forecast. Sunday is going to be record challenging and even early next week. We'll have some record challenging heat. Now coming up at six, I'm going to talk about an opportunity to spot the space station flying over San Antonio tonight. Starting tonight, we have a first opportunity. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So who presents pop? Former players, former assistant coaches, uh, Hall of Fame players from the Spurs. So it's right. really no surprise, right? But it's still pretty cool to talk about. So Pop's going into the Hall of Fame along with Tony and Becky. We now know they're Hall of Fame presenters. Plus, Malachi Branham from the Spurs responded to all his haters out there coming up. Coach Pop will have some familiar faces by his side next month. Today, the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame announced a list of Hall of Famers scheduled to present the class of 2023 at the enshrinement ceremony. Greg Popovich will be presented by David Robinson, Manu Ginobili, Tim Duncan, and Tony Parker. Tony Parker himself will be presented by Manu and Tim, so the big three back together again. And Becky Hammond will be presented by Cheryl Swoops and Teresa Weatherspoon. The Hall of Fame ceremony will be held Saturday, August 12th in Springfield, Massachusetts, in case that 12 sports will Will be there. The Spurs today tweeted, Welcome to the 210, Reggie. The Spurs acquired forward Reggie Bullock and a 2030 first round pick swap from the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for three future second round picks as part of a three team trade with the Mavericks and Boston Celtics. Dom Barlow and the Summer League Spurs beat the Wizards last night 96 85 with Victor Wimbanyama watching from the game, watching from the bench, that is, as this Summer League play is over with. Barlow had himself another solid outing with 20 points and seven rebounds. He shot nine for 15 from the floor. Julian Champigny scored 18 and Blake Wesley 14 for the Spurs, but the big dog was Malachi Branham, who dropped in a game high 29 in 28 minutes. He really took off in the fourth quarter with 13 points to help keep the Wizards from coming back. Now, Branham did this after scoring just six points Sunday night in the Spurs' loss and then seeing a bunch of negative comments about himself on social media. It's hard. It's definitely hard since you're on social media a lot and everything. And, but it's funny at the same time because they don't know how much work you put in. Just just stuff like that. But, you know, I look at it. It gives me motivation. And, you know, I'm glad I read that. <laughs> I mean, he's a good basketball player. <laughs> and uh, it's, it was a rough night for him the other night. And that, that's a credit to him that he just comes back. And I thought, you know, funny way, I'm not sure about the stats, but I don't think it started rolling for him early on either. So I think there was a world where he could have just put his head down or whatever. And, and, but stayed with it, and uh, you got the rewards, and it's very helpful for us. Spurs will continue summer league play Friday night with the Pistons. That game will tip at 8 p.m. local time from the Thomas and Mack Center, and the Pistons play the Raptors tonight. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you so much for watching the news at 5. World News up next. See you back here at 6. Stay cool.